Hey, it's Mark from Apple Training. This week, we are re-releasing my popular Using and Animating Cameras in Motion tutorial. It's been fully updated for Motion 5.4. So on this MacBreak Studio, what I thought I'd do is show you how fun and easy it is to animate cameras in motion using the framing behavior. Let's dive right in. Here I have a template from motionvfx.com that I've simplified a bit to improve playback performance. And to help further, I've set the resolution to half. I removed the camera animation that comes with it to show you how easy and fun it is to create your own camera animations. This scene has a drop zone for adding content in Final Cut. If I scrub through the scene, a plane flies by and a car towing another drop zone passes by. Let's say I'd like to go look at this drop zone and then follow the car. So with the camera selected, from the Behaviors pop-up menu, I'll choose Camera, Framing. I'll move forward in time a little bit, tap I to trim the start of the frame behavior. Move forward a little bit more, tap O. I can click on the end of it and see that it's about two seconds long. I can trim it there to last right about two seconds. And then in the inspector or in the heads up display, I'll bring that up for a moment, we have a well. I'm gonna close the heads up display because I wanna use the inspector to get access to all the parameters. So I need a target for the framing behavior. And this here says drop zone two. So I'll drag drop zone two into that well. And now if I play across that framing behavior, the camera goes right to that drop zone. Now I wanna make a couple adjustments. First of all, I want the position and rotation transition to take the entire duration of the behavior. I also prefer to orient to final and I'll change the transition to ease both. Now if I play back, I get a nice smooth move that takes the entire duration of the behavior. Now in addition to that, I really don't like this final framing. It perfectly frames the drop zone. You can't tell because you can't see the whole drop zone since it's got some framing elements here. But this framing behavior is great because we have these framing offset controls. So I can choose to adjust in X, in Y, and in Z. So I'm going to back this out a little bit and maybe move it over a little bit. And I have very precise control over exactly what that framing looks like. Now I'll play that back. And that's exactly the framing I want. We can even adjust the way the camera gets there. So by default, it just goes straight there as direct straight a line as it possibly can. But we have these path offset controls that let us adjust the direction the camera takes to get there. So right now, see this tree here? It just goes a little bit over the tree. Let's say we'd like it to go to the right of the tree. I'll use the path offset in X and drag over a little bit. And now the camera will move over to the right, but still land in the exact same location to frame my content. Great, so now we've moved into that first drop zone. And after we've been there for a little while, let's come back out again. To make this faster, I'll just duplicate this existing framing behavior by hitting Command D. And then I'll press Shift and the left bracket key, which will move this new copy over to start where the playhead is. Now for this new one, I want it to frame something else. And I'd really like it to frame the whole scene. Don't really know where I could find something that represents the whole scene. Uh, I could take this whole group that covers everything and try that. So I'll drop that in and then play over that. And that's not quite what I wanted, but I don't care. I can use these offsets. Now, I'll reset the original offsets because this is a copy. I'll choose to reset that parameter. And then I'll back way out in Z and then maybe over a little bit in X. And I'll even bring the scene down a little bit by dragging in Y. And let's say I don't really want to see that other drop zone. Let's move it over a little bit more. So even though I didn't really pick the, the object I wanted to frame, I can still frame this exactly the way I want to. And because I made a copy, I don't need to change the orientation or the easing or the position and rotation transition times. They're all set up correctly for me. So now when we play, we push into that drop zone number two right there, wait a little bit, and then we pull back out. And as we pull back out, this car appears. And what I'd like to do is now follow this car in this drop zone. So what I'll do is once it comes into view, I'll hit Command D again and Shift left bracket again to move this new framing behavior over. 
And this time I want to frame this car and we can see there's a group of elements called car. So I'll just drag that over to it. And let's try that out. I'll play it back. And it doesn't seem to do quite the right thing. So let's reset our parameters here for our framing offset and for our path offset. And I'll also change the orientation to current. Because this is a moving object, I want to orient to its current position. And let's try that out. And now it follows the car nicely, but as soon as we get to the end of the behavior, the camera stops and the car moves out of the scene. If we'd like it to continue to follow the car, what we can do, I'm gonna extend this a little bit longer, and in the inspector, I'm gonna change this position and rotation transition back down a little bit. What this means is I'll land on the object I wanna frame before the behavior is over. So now when we go, we move into that drop zone, we wait a little bit, and then we let it go. And once again, if I wanna get closer to it, let's go ahead and just adjust my framing offset because it's framing the entire group containing the car as well as this drop zone. And I'll just use each of these to adjust them. Maybe get a little closer so I go through that bush there. And over a little bit more, just about like that. And now when I play that back, we come in, we hang on it for a little while, and then we let it move out of the scene. So you can see how flexible the framing behavior is. And of course, for the timing of any of these moves, if I want to make the move itself last longer and shorter, I can trim here. If I want the move to happen sooner or later, I can just drag this in time. There are many more controls to this framing behavior that I can go over in this MacBreak Studio. We cover them in detail in our camera framing tutorial. So please check that out. Finally, because this is a rather playful template, I want to add a little bit more motion to the camera. I want to have it have a little more handheld look. So with the camera selected, I'll go to its properties and for position, I'll click the downward facing arrow and add a wriggle parameter behavior. Now the default settings of the wriggle parameter behavior are a little strong. If I play it now, the camera's bouncing all over the place, not quite what I want there. So instead I'll reduce the amount to maybe 25 I'll change the apply mode to add and subtract. I'll reduce the noisiness and then try that out. And now the camera bounces a little bit as it moves and kind of adds to the overall feel of the animation. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, so please leave a comment below. Also, if you haven't, check out our 60 second tips. We come out with them every few days and it's a great way to learn Final Cut Motion and other topics very quickly. Subscribe. We'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.